folks, Ariel over here at Fineth, where given all of that info I shared in the last few videos about uh, things I learned and the whole process of finding a new home for Fineth, um, I want to talk about where Fineth is actually going. If you're new here, welcome. There are tons of new people. This is my tiny house at Fineth, where I've lived for seven and a half years now. Off-grid, as in no physical connection to any public utilities, here in a little clearing in the woods in the mountains of western Wyoming. Um, and that whole time I've been on somebody else's property. I trade them work and help with property maintenance and stuff in exchange for being able to park my house here. The folks that were my landlords passed away this past winter, um, and I am now in the process of moving. I wasn't sure, I, I always knew from the start this wasn't going to be a permanent location for me, but I wasn't sure exactly when I'd end up moving, but for the, for several years, uh, probably like five years now, I've been shopping and looking for a place to go when this time came. So now I'm there, and I talked a whole lot about that whole journey and the things I learned, and now I want to show you guys actually where Phi Nith is going. So despite all of the many things I talked about being important to, and, and Phi Nith is moving with my awesome partner Clay, who it has a job that still provides a, a caretaker cabin as part of his job, so Fineth, the house itself, is going to be in its new location. He's going to still be primarily in his caretaker cabin as as needed for his caretaking job, which involves being physically present most of the time. And I will be doing a lot of back and forth. We'll be together there, doing some work there. Uh, when he has free time or weekends or evenings, he'll be at the new place with me, helping me with projects. And so there's going to be some back and forth. But given everything we were looking for and that was important to us, here's what we actually ended up with, because almost nowhere is ever going to have every single thing you want or could dream about in a property. So that would go back to the first topic I talked about, figuring out what's most important to you. What is a deal breaker and what's, oh, this would be nice, but I could live without it. So some things that would be nice, but I could live without them is there could be a waterfall in the backyard. That would be awesome. That first property that I actually bought and then resold for the reasons discussed had a waterfall in the backyard. That was super cool, but that is something I could live without. The current property does not. It, so the pros for it, and here's a little bit of a look at it, and you're going to start seeing a bunch of videos about we closed on this property kind of mid-summer last year, uh, right at the end of July. I guess that's getting more toward late summer for here. And so we got to spend from, well, we first looked at the property in June. So it's almost a first year, a full year now since we first looked at it, of observing what goes on there through the different seasons, which is something I highly recommend doing. And then starting on some projects there. So you're going to start seeing videos of some of those projects we did last year and now running into this spring. Because Fineth itself, the house here, is probably going to be moving to a new home within the next week or so. Um, depending a little on the weather and how much snow comes down in the next few days like they're forecasting and how muddy that makes the ground. But anyway, very soon. Um, so this property, uh, some pros that it has, things that it really liked about it. It's got some you know, fairly flat, it's not flat, but it's at an angle, but compared to the side of a mountain, fairly flat ground, which is nice for walking around on, planting a garden on, uh, planting fruit trees on, all that kind of thing. That, that's a big pro. It's in the, the general area and climate that I liked. I wanted to stay in the mountain west, but also I, I currently live on the north side of a mountain, so it's very shady and, and extra cold and snowy even compared to the general surrounding area. I wanted something that was either south facing or a little open to the south for better sunlight exposure, just for being able to better grow more food since I knew I wasn't interested in moving to somewhere super hot, which of course the plants would like. I'm just a wimp about heat. I get very whiny and grouchy when I'm too hot. And so I wanted sunlight, you know, as much as possible. It does have that. It's it's open to the south. Um, it actually has really great topsoil, which was a surprise because a lot of things in this area are rock. Here where I've been gardening, it's almost solid rock, big rocks with tiny little bits of, you know, soil in between the corners of the rocks. 
And I was willing to live with that. That was, uh, you know, something I was willing to deal with and grow through composting in such new soil on top of whatever was there. But I discovered when I first dug a hole in the ground that this actually has nice deep topsoil. I mean, like that deep across most of the property, which for the mountains is huge. Um, I know if you live in Iowa or something where it's 20 feet deep, that's probably not impressive at all. But if you're used to dealing with topsoil that's like this thick, that's pretty cool. Um, so that's a big pro. It has a, a spring on it. Water, of course, is essential to life and therefore was important to me. So it has a spring on it and a little creek that runs down it. So there is water options. Um, it could also drill a well if we ever want to, but with uh, spring-fed water pressure, you probably are not likely to bother. Um, let's see, pros. It's got some trees on it. Um, it's the obvious stuff that was in a price range we were able to afford. It's a little over three acres, which more space would have been nice, but my clearing here is about a third of an acre, and I've been able to do almost everything I want to in that, uh, you know, space, and so, a, 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 you know, that's ten times as much space I should be able to fit every, all my plans into that. Oh, and another big pro is I can actually see the mountains. After having lived in the mountains for the past 14 years, I have always been in spots where I couldn't actually see any of them. Like most recently, I actually live on the side of the base of one of them, which means from where I live, I can't actually see it. So that's actually kind of exciting to me. I look forward to being able to look at mountains <laughs> from where I live. Some cons, it not only didn't have a waterfall in the backyard, it doesn't have a lot of trees. I like living in the woods. I like the privacy. I like the shelter from wind and all that that are just kind of moderated by a forest. Um, privacy is really important to Clay. That's something he really likes. But we looked at it and decided that was a fixable thing. So we've already begun planting lots of trees. So the one whole edge is already kind of treed and we're planting stuff around all the others. So eventually, this is going to take some time because trees take a while to grow. Eventually, it should be back to kind of a bigger version of what I've got right here, where we have a clearing to grow things in and live in surrounded by, by trees. Um, so that was a con. It... In addition to having that nice topsoil, it had been commercially farmed at some point in the past, I think more than a decade ago, best we can tell. So hopefully there's no uh, residual farm chemicals really left in that soil. It takes, I think, three years to be certified or maybe five to be certified organic. But this is, I'm not interested in being certified organic, but based on that, this has been a lot longer than that. So that, that kind of issue should be pretty much dissipated though we don't know what was put on there, you know, in the past. It's been a long time, so it should be good for veggie growing. Um, it was also used at one point, the one little end of the property, as a community uh, burn pile for everyone's branches and slash and stuff, so there was some cleanup of remnants of junk there. There are probably still going to be some bits of buried metal and stuff that got thrown in that burn pile down under the soil. Um, that's kind of a con, but it's it's in a location where we're basically planning to put a driveway right over that spot anyway. So that works out to not be a, a big deal. If I was trying to plant my orchard right on there or grow my veggies right on there, that would be a bigger deal. But under a driveway, I can live with that. So you're going to see a, you know, here's here's a look at what it looks like now. And you're going to see a bunch more of that as I show you the projects we worked on last year, and then Moving Finance, which is gonna be really exciting, and you're definitely gonna see a video of that too. But this is what we ended up with after all that searching and looking for years, and hopefully we can live there happily ever after. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.